We learned previously about setting time for our queues, and that affects all the moves that are happening in each of those queues. And now we want to look at discrete timing. Discrete channel timing allows you to put a time on a specific channel so that that time runs separately from that of the queue time. So the first thing we're going to do is build a quick blackout. I'm currently sitting in queue 31. So I'm going to say select active out, which is my fastest way to do a blackout. And I'm going to say record next time three block assert label blackout. And let's say I wanted 103 to take a little bit longer fading out than all of my other channels. I'm going to give that a discrete time. So I'm going to say 103 time 10 enter. And you'll notice that I get a red T that sits next to my channel 103. If I press and hold my time display button, you'll see that that will show all of my timing elements. I get a dash slash 10. The dash is there because you can also put discrete delays on a channel. So you'll see that I have a 10 second fade time. I let go of my time button and that goes back. If you're on hardware that doesn't have a dedicated time display button, you can also hold about and hit the time command line key and that will get you the same display. Because my timing changes are manual, I want to make sure I store them. So I'm going to say update, enter, and that's going to save that timing change to 32. You'll also see that my T turned blue, and I get a little plus in my playback status display where the timing component is. And the plus is indicating that not all channels are following the timing of the queue. So keep an eye out for that and use your timing display to investigate further if you need to. So let's go ahead and watch this happen. I'm going to hit back to my scene, and then I'm going to hit go. And you'll see that everything fades out in three seconds, except if you watch channel 103, it takes 10 seconds to fade out.